Ahoy, friends. Welcome to Building the Alpha Dory. I'm Dan, and this is a project to build a Chamberlain Racing Dory from John Gardner's The Dory Book, illustrations by Sam Manning. Today we'll be out in the shop working on fitting those garbered, those uh, shear strakes, and uh, we might even get to uh, cutting the gains in the shears. All right, well, let's get out to it, into the shop and get to it. So this, uh, this plank is the uh, shear line of the dory, so you want to right now I'm taking out what is a little bit of reverse curve or flat at the uh, bow and stern. Or the bow right now, and then I'm gonna do the stern in a minute. I'll just
should do it there. Because of the uh, tumble home, it tends to, it has the ability to like a completely straight line, but actually coming down a little bit at the transom. So you want to make sure that it's not coming down at all. Maybe going a little bit back up. edge once it's on the boat as well so uh, which I'm going to be doing with the next plank down but there's no point in uh, in not getting it close while it's on the bench here just that much easier to work on and uh, Uh, it is doable 
um, it's to some degree, you know, more, more inevitable anyway than, than the other planks, because the other, uh, the first three planks when they're going on, you know that the straight edge is going to do the bottom edge of each plank. Um, whereas these need to be spiled and tweaked a little bit so there is a little bit more room for movement. And uh, But since they're knuckled, it's really easy to get a plane in there and uh, clean them up, trim them to uh, you know what you want after the fact when the boat's upside down, when you're trimming the garboard plank. You gotta do that to the garboard anyway, so. All right, so that looks pretty good on that end. So set this down on here up on there. Yeah, next thing to do is going to be to cut the gains. So it looks like we're good here. Alright, so now on to the next plank. Or should I say the last plank. at some point, so I might as well do it right now.
has its pluses and minuses. I can get it out of the way completely. Um, really easily. You know, it's not Is, so the top edge is pretty important because like I said that's going to give us our shear line and I suppose you can do it once it's on the boat like it's it's quite doable but then the frames are in the way so if you want to get a really if you want to have an easy time of it getting a nice fair smooth run you know get the plank fair and then when it gets on the boat it'll it'll stay fair and you don't have to clean it up on the boat that way and work around frames and that kind of frame ends And I'll uh, slide the plank forward so I can uh, get in underneath the uh, shelf there and get out the other end of it. Uh, get in under the tool cabinet. sight along this as well. Like I said, you definitely don't want any 
you don't want any round down and, and plank because when the plank tumble home tumbles home, if there's any bend inward to it, you know, in the shape of the door, tumbling home, it'll actually the plank will drop. So it looks good. It's uh, pretty much straight there. A little bit of a kick to it, and uh, there's not a lot of bend where it tumbles home in the transom of this boat. But you know, some boats that have tumble home, those planks will dive quite a bit if there's shape to the bend to the plank back there. Right. Okay, so I just flipped the plank, and now we'll do the. Uh, that's what I said is the bottom edge. Unless we're just trying to get it close because, uh, as I was saying, it's easy to, uh, to do this on the boat as well. I don't want to take any hook out of the bottom edge of this. So the uh, hook that's, that's drawn in there uh, from the, along the bottom could well be hook in the next plank. You know, there could be a dive in the next plank up, but we've got a, we've got an inch and a quarter overlap and we actually don't even have the, um, we don't even have gains at the back, so we've got, you know, theoretically kind of an infinite amount of room back there to play with. So, uh, as far as the plank overlaps, um, you know, we've got a lot of wiggle room in there. So, so what you want to do is make those plank edges do what looks right, and then you can, uh, you know, make up for it in running a tiny bit higher or a tiny bit lower on the uh, plank below. And it's not a big deal at that point. Um, with the other planks and the gains, you really need to follow that plank below it precisely because you won't have that sort of wiggle room with the uh, with previous planks. You won't be able to move them up or down accordingly. Uh. All right, on to the bow sections. Bench, we should be able to uh, 
starting cutting the gains. Let's see if I uh, have to move it a little bit. This one is the port plank, which means when it goes on the boat, it's going to be like this. So the gain will be cut in the bottom edge, which is the edge that's facing out at the moment. So that's a good thing because it'll make it easy to cut the gain. So I want to uh, come back about six inches with the full, full uh, width of the gain, and then um, you know, as we've been doing on all the previous planks, taper it off about three feet back. Two and a half to three feet, depending on what type of door you're building. This is keeping in mind that the plank below, um, we've already cut the gain in before we put it on the boat, but it's also got uh, bevels cut into the uh, edge of the plank along the length to give this new plank the correct land for the frame angles. So let's see, yep, we got the line right back to. Yeah, right back to the start of the game, so that's good. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, we found that, uh, that the, uh, the broad axe has been working well for roughing these out. cut these right off the plank um, <clears throat> because of the way we're finishing the bow um, it really allows for a fair amount of um, well it makes it easier to put the planks on honestly it gives you a little bit of leeway as to where you 
start and end your games, which is another one of the advantages of that flanking technique. See the uh, this plank finds right out to almost nothing at the end, as have the last the last two um, planks, and that's because the uh, because of the angle that these planks are coming in at, the swoop to them versus the straight top edge. And the fact that, uh, you know, it combines with the fact that you're running out of stem there. So, uh, you know, the, it's kind of vital that the planks narrow down. Otherwise, you'll end up with a Viking ship. If these planks were staying the same width all the way up, then the bow would be swooping up like this because, you know, we're flattening out the shear by narrowing these these plank ends so if you kept them the same width then the bow would have to come way up you know like a sort of a Hagar the Horribles ship all right looks good and we're not cutting gains in the um, in the back and the aft end of this plank. And we're not cutting gains on the top because it's the last plank. There's not another plank to land on it. So you don't want a gain there. So that's it for this plank. Gains are cut. Thanks for stopping by building the Alpha Dory. Join us next episode when we finish cutting the final gains. And, uh, Get ready to hang the last planks on the story. A massive thank you to everybody who's liked, commented, subscribed, and supported the channel. This wouldn't be possible without your support and comments. So thanks a lot and uh, have a great day. See you next episode.